Uh, not often enough, I managed to put an ankle tackle on this guy, uh, who is a uh, host of LouRockwell.com. Oversees the uh, Bamises Institute down in uh, uh, down in uh, Auburn, Alabama. Writes uh, writes magnificent columns and blogs and books like the Left, the Right, and the State. Speaking of Liberty and others that we've recommended here, and uh, and just a great guy to talk to and get the low down skinny on uh, damn near anything. Uh, we found him hiding away, hiding out from us out in California. It's uh, Lou Rockwell, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Lou. Hi, Brian. How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. It was great to uh, have you on board. I, uh, oh, I got to tell you, the, the, uh, the, uh, if you, if you, uh, and I'm not saying this because we talk about this all the time when you're not here, but uh, LouRockwell.com, any state, anywhere, pro market. If you want the straight skinny on damn near anything, uh, this is uh, this is it. I'm looking at your website right now. And by the way, uh, Michael Bolden's piece. On uh, on Tom Wood's book was absolutely exceptional. Your ticket to freedom. I wanted to ask you about that a little bit because I I know you're uh, uh, you're high on Tom, high on the book, high on the whole concept of nullification. Do you think? Uh, just dive right in here. Do you do you uh, do you get the sense uh, that that could be uh, the 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 rallying point, for want of a better term, that will actually give traction to so many of these other uh, uh, little percolating things that are going on around the country? You've got the Tenth Amendment Foundation over here. You got the Tea Parties over here. You got you got. Uh, you, you, I mean, there are a number of really positive uh, positive things that are that are moving, uh, but they haven't galvanized about around one thing. And I think Tom's got a, a really great uh, a really great uh, idea here. What do you think? Right, I think that's exactly right. And, you know, the poor Tea Parties don't really have uh, the intellectuals they need. Uh, they're great people. They have wonderful ideas sometimes. But they need, they need an organizing principle. And this is true of many different Americans who are so outraged and rightly outraged at what the federal government is doing to us to destroy our freedom and to destroy our prosperity. So along comes Tom Woods. This, by the way, is his ninth book. I don't know how this... He's just a kid. He t- turns out <laughs> magnificent book after magnificent book. And uh, this one is really thrilling. It's, it's based on real American history, not the sort that you're taught in the public schools or by the media. Uh, thoroughly documented uh, about the principles of, that Jefferson and Madison wrote about in... Uh, in uh, the end of the 18th century that absolutely are just as applicable today as they were then and it's the principle of states rights uh, where the states if they if the federal government is imposing some unconstitutional mandate on the states that the states have the right in a political sense to say uh-uh no we're not going to do it and in fact you're not coming into this state and enforcing it with your federal officials so this is very radical but it's thoroughly american uh, Tom, for example, shows how northern states use nullification to try to block the fugitive slave law, which was one of the great evils of American history. Uh, and Tom has a great, a great YouTube with Bob Murphy where he's being interviewed by a zombie, with economist Bob Murphy playing the zombie. <laughs> and uh, Tom is explaining this, and the zombie is saying, racism, slavery, and similar words, the sort of thing that the mainstream media will throw at him. But I can't, this book is so well written, it's so compelling, and it absolutely is a blueprint for restoring our freedom. It's inspiring. I'll t- it, Michael Bolden is exactly right. This is a book that it actually is capable of turning things around. So I would urge all conservatives, all libertarians, all Americans who may not ad- adhere to any particular political philosophy so far as they know, but are outraged at what D.C. is doing, read this book, Nullification by Tom Woods. How to resist federal tyranny in the 21st century? The the thing I uh, the thing I really uh, enjoyed about it is that this is uh, as you just mentioned is not a new idea. It goes back to the Kentucky resolutions that you know and, and, and Thomas Jefferson and all the rest. But it also, uh, without necessarily being called a movement or the nullification flag being waved or whatever, it's actually gotten traction in a bunch of states on a, under a number of different banners, uh, uh, like well, the, the um, uh, medical marijuana certain gun laws, Obamacare, uh, the Real ID Act, and so on, uh, and, and with great success. I mean, we're not talking about one or two places. We're talking about, you know, dozens of states in a number of different areas. But the question I have for you, um, the and I'm going to ask Tom when he comes on, uh, hopefully next week, is the, uh, uh, what do you think, though, Lou, the, um, the, certainly there aren't a whole lot of governors 
or state legislatures with the um, with the appropriate uh, anatomical parts, uh, you know, to stand up against green mail, uh, which is the oldest uh, trick in the book, or one of the oldest, uh, that's uh, practiced by Washington outside of Virginia, Texas, Oklahoma, uh, Arizona. Uh, I, I think that's about it. I really can't think of uh, New Jersey now. Um, I really can't think of uh, too many other uh, preponderance of states uh, that um, uh, that might be willing to stand up for this thing. What do you think? Well, on one particular issue or another, most states have already stood up to the federal government. And it, it, it goes from left to right. It's things like, as you say, medical marijuana, uh, and indeed in California coming up the legalization of marijuana period, uh, which is another great nullification movement, although the, the people pushing it probably be horrified to have it called that, but that's what it is. And as you say, uh, real ID, other kinds of civil liberties issues, people who are against the various wars of, of Bush and Obama regimes, so there are a lot of state legislators already, but you're right, it's never going to come from the top. Nothing good comes from the top. It can come from the people. And as people, whether it's concerned with their gun rights, and boy, we ought to be concerned with our gun rights, or whether it's socialized medicine or fascist medicine or whatever kinds of crazy stimulus package or just the, the more and more control from Washington over our lives, there, people are very angry in this country. They're right to be angry. They're frightened. They're right to be frightened about the future of the economy, what's happening to our remaining freedoms. And I think this book really can ignite a prairie fire. It's, this, it's, it's a great, thoroughly American idea. Again, goes back, as you say, to the Kentucky and Virginia resolves as to what the states could do if the federal government got outside its bounds. As we know, got outside its bounds, I mean, they're, you know, they'd like to take over the universe. Uh, as well as our own lives, our businesses, our communities, our children. They want to run all our schools. So it's time for a revolution, a peaceful revolution. This is thoroughly American. It's pro-freedom. It's just based in reality. I tell you, it's a great... It, th this book actually can make a big difference. And if you can think of one book that the people in Washington don't want you to read... It's Tom Woods' nullification book. Well, that is uh, that is absolutely true. The uh, and 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 it's uh, I really like the idea that it's uh, that it can be done that it's that it has been done. It's already got some uh, it's already got some traction. The other thing that that that, um, that entered into my thinking on this that I wanted to ask you about was yesterday's uh, Supreme Robes uh, decision with respect to the uh, second uh, the Second Amendment. Um, the uh, what concerned me. Uh, was in reading the decision, uh, and I haven't gone cover to cover on it, but I noticed the way uh, Scalia uh, uh, wrote his, and then I noticed the way Thomas wrote his, and that Thomas was going after uh, the Privileges and Immunities Clause of the 14th Amendment, which, I, which, which would have nailed the coffin shut on this issue once and for all had everybody else signed on to it. But Scalia didn't want to go down that route. He seemed to be content uh, just doing his wordsmithing a little... Uh, uh, irony, a little comedy, uh, picking apart Stevens' dissent, uh, which 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 he did very excellently, and I'm, I'm not taking anything away from that. But by not joining up with Thomas and a one-two punch, you in the privileges and immunities instead of going along with this uh, um, uh, due process uh, claw, uh, aspect, uh, now that just opens the door for never-ending lawsuits that will ultimately keep lawyers employed, the courts clogged, and the uh, Supreme Court busy. Do you get that? I get this, and I think you said this to me uh, in California like maybe seven years ago, and that was there was no reason to believe that just because the Supreme Court was the Supreme Court, it was still one of the three specific parts of government. They know where they get their paycheck, and they are not about you know to do anything to upset that apple cart. Is, is, is that a demonstration of that right here? Yeah, in fact, I think this is actually an ominous decision. Now, first of all, obviously people in Chicago have the right to b keep and bear arms, to defend themselves. There was a recent case where an elderly man in his 80s was had a home invasion in the middle of the night. He and his wife, of course, terrified. Guy, An armed guy broke into his house, broke down the door. And in this kind of crime, typically they kill the homeowners and uh, sometimes rape the wife, even even a, even a woman in her 80s. So this guy pulled out his gun and he plugged the burglar and killed him. So what happens? The police are investigating him. How come he's got a gun? Right. So, you know, the, the Chicago law is fundamentally immoral. It's like New York City gun laws, like some other Washington, D.C. gun laws, uh, especially in the past. But what the, Fed, what the Supreme Court said was 
Second Amendment is no business of the states. This is in effect what they said. Not I'm giving you the the uh, the true the, the true version is versus their written version. It's right. no business of the states. It's entirely the business of the federal government. So now, what I expect to see is what they call in Europe the upward harmonization. They talk about tax rates. The upward harmonization that is increasing taxes in lower tax areas. I think you're going to see the federal government now um, increasing gun controls in the freer states, or at least that's what they're going to try. However, I think talk about something that will cause people to revolt and react, to resist, and no longer put up with it. I, I don't think they can get away with that, but I think they're going to try. I think the Supreme Court decision has got some, some bad aspects to it, even though if it can help the people of Chicago be freer for a while, that, of course, is very good. Well, the uh, yeah, to the extent that's possible. We were talking earlier in the show here, the uh, article out of the Wall Street Journal and on the uh, – uh, the Chicago uh, Sun Times that uh, they already had a meeting of their aldermen up there, and they're all up in arms figuring out how they can come up with more licensing procedures and limit one gun. And you got to take a, got to get a master's degree in uh, in uh, petrochemical. Uh, expl- I mean, all sorts of crap, you know, to you know to try and get These around guys are it all. All armed, of course. They've got oh, well, of course, police yeah. guards, and they're yeah. all armed. Mayor Daly has a gun permit. But the regular people, the taxpayers, the non-parasites in Chicago, they're supposed to be disarmed. Well, like the pig said, some of us are all, we're all equal, but some of us are more equal than others. I, uh, and that and no further, uh, never uh, more of the truth there. Before we go, I got to get your comments on the um, on this thing going down in the Gulf. If uh, if there was ever a great uh, opportunity to see government in action in a counterproductive way, uh, that certainly would be it. But uh, I know you've got your own uh, your own perspective on that. I want to hear it. Well, I think one interesting aspect of it it, it does show government is entirely impotent. I mean, they can talk of they can. They can kill people, they can steal your money through taxation, wage wars and drop bombs and so forth. It's the, it's the most uncreative institution on the face of the earth, the government. So, of course, they're, they, they can't actually do it. What they can do, of course, is prevent good things from happening. So for 70 days, as Matt Drudge points out today, for 70 days, Obama has blocked foreign countries, 30 foreign countries offered to help us, has blocked much better technology for cleaning up the oil. Uh, so now finally Hillary's de- uh, State Department today says, well, they're going to allow 12 countries to help, not 30. They're going to allow 12 of them just as soon as they finish writing the regulations about how they're allowed to help. So, you know, yeah. here, why are these decisions being made in Washington? Why aren't these decisions being made in Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama, Florida, and so forth? So, again, you know, I, and of course some people would like to have these made by the U.N. or whatever. All these decisions should be made at the local level. Uh, BP is, I must say, a questionable uh, con- uh, company. It was uh, to save BP's bacon that the, U- the CIA and the British intelligence people overthrew the democratically elected uh, government of Iran in 1953, installed the Shah, leading to all trouble that subsequently come about. BP also, because of the Bush administration and the Clinton administration, Democrats and Republicans all got together to put a $75 million cap on BP's liability if there was trouble. So, you know, they had, in a free market, you would not get an insurance policy. There'd be no cap on your liability. You could not get an insurance policy without the insurance company inspecting everything you were doing and making sure it was safe. But they didn't worry about that, and it, I don't think it means that they deliberately were, were uh, negligent. It's not that. But on the margin, uh, they're not going to be as careful because they know that there's a cap, of a, liter- you know, a laughably small cap, put in sure. by the George Bush the first oil administration and the Clinton oil administration and the oily Congress, and they all got together uh, to, to put this kind of unfree market interventionist, really fascist state, corporatist state, uh, uh, horrible benefit to these companies they shouldn't have. So uh, we need a free market. We need people responsible for their actions. We don't need the federal government owning the the bottom of the ocean, by the way. So we don't need the federal government determining who gets to do what. It should be private property. It should be able to be homesteaded. But again, if people make a mistake, if they're negligent or they cause damage to others, they have to be responsible. But this is it. We, what we see in the Gulf is the result of government planning on behalf of big corporations and big government against the rest of us. It's not good.
Mm, well, I like the plug the damn hole line just shows you can't bully an oil leak. I like that. You know, that kind of hubris will just take you so far. I would like to know why he hasn't suspended the Jones Act that Bush did. I mean, at least that was right. something. But, uh, I mean, there's plenty to complain about there. In, I, uh, in effect, that's I, what they're finally doing. However, they're writing the regula They're not even doing it yet. They're talking about doing it. They're writing the regulations. Yeah, I think we ought to appoint a committee to study this. That's what I'm huh. thinking. A commission. Always a uh, always a hoot having you on, Lou. Thanks a lot for the uh, for LouRockwell.com. Uh, look forward to uh, working with Tom and you and this business with nullification. I think we've uh, we got something we can all get our teeth into and get behind and push. Darn right. And Thank you, you can Brian. go to LouRockwell.com and uh, get you, uh, get yourself a copy of Thomas E. Wood's uh, great new book. I've got mine right here. Nullification, How to Resist Federal Tyranny in the 21st Century. Lou, have a good time in California. Look forward to our next chat. Thank you, Brian. Be well. Lou Rockwell, a uh, hell of a guy and a hell of a site, LouRockwell.com.